I got collar. Oh, there he comes. Good one. Solid fish. That is a nice fish. <laughs> You're watching Northeast Angling. We're proud to present inshore and offshore saltwater fishing. We cover every species from fluke and porgies to stripers, sharks, and tuna. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations at neangling.com. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, here we are. We're back in Montauk, Long Island. Our guest today is Captain John Stedman. John has a uh, charter boat. You also do guide service also, right, John? Hunting? Yeah, duck hunting and uh, we do we fishing and we do also peasant hunts. I got you. But right, well, you're not just a Montauk guy. No. no. John's we got a little history here. We actually, we know John from back home. Yeah, John, John's, Washington. John's homegrown. He's based in our own town of Fort Washington. John is there in the spring, and then when that fight starts to slow a little bit, he moves his boat out to Montauk. So, John, where are we now? What are we doing? We're about uh, two miles off the point of Montauk uh, on a rock pile, one of the many ones that are out here. Yeah. And uh, basically, we got about a two knot current running right now. Which is quick. It's very quick. <laughs> it's and, screaming. Uh, we're going to see if we can get ourselves some bass. Now, we're going to fish a little bit unique here, Andy. Like, you and I do this back home, but when we have a lot lighter tide. So, John, what are we going to be doing today exactly? We're actually going to be, uh, we're going to use one heavy weight uh, on mono. Okay. But then we're also going to be letting surf line back. Surf line and sometimes even wire, you say. Correct. And okay. no weight at all on that stuff. No weight. What you're trying to do is get the bait to fall down in the water column where the fish are as the film is going back. Well, I'm ready to get started. Yeah, I know we got an early start here, but I just... Which is rare. We got it, you know, but we have <laughs> the tide going one way, and then obviously at some point this is going to switch over. Right. And are we going to get the bite now? Or is the bite going to be a couple hours from now? What, is, what do you think? The bite is usually better on the flood. Okay. Right now we have the, the ebb and toward the end of the ebb. Okay. Well, let's get into that later. Let's try to catch okay. some on the, on the wrong tide. Okay. So I'm ready for the right. Well, I'm just trying to set up my excuses. That's all. Wow. <laughs> there is no excuse. Uh, let's get some let's bait cut and let's go. A little touch. There we go, boys. There you go, Andy. You know, I wasn't back very far. I threw in a handful of chum. Now, would you always, basically, John, you're always throwing in chum, right, as, as you go back with your baits? Yes. Trying to go back you with throw, a little you throw, cloud. You know, you throw a couple of chunks in, and then you let your bait back. Okay. And you keep doing that. Now, we're fishing, obviously, fresh bunker. Uh, on an average trip, John, what'd you say, about 50 to 60 pieces? 50 to 60 through? pieces we go through. Oh, the bait guys must love you. <laughs> that's why you got to learn how to throw a cast net in. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> really it. Well, this isn't the biggest bass in the world, but it's a bass. There you go. And it's not a bad start. It's not a bad fish, actually. Yeah, well, it's a keeper for sure. So basically what you want to do is you want to keep your baits going back with the chum. Yeah. As you're chumming, you want to keep your bait like right in that. And then what these, do, these fish are doing now, these, these fish are laying back there, and they're just picking these pieces off as they come back. And then your bait comes along, and Correct. they pick that off too. I'm fishing one on the bottom right now just to try to get, get below the, some of the bluefish that we saw before. I got you. All right, let me just get this guy back. It's gonna be really easy to revive him. Now, John, like, uh, I would assume this gets a lot easier when the tide eases. Like right now, Andy and I are fishing surf lawn. Oh, there he goes. And you actually got wire line on there. You got. Oh, I had wire. Yeah, I you just switched? switched, Richie. I switched to mono with a heavy weight just to get on the bottom. So you're using like a standard fish finder rig? Correct. Okay. Yep. Fish finder rig, and right now I had 10 ounces, but I'm gonna go a little lighter because it uh, it wasn't going back far enough. Andy, how far back was that fish? Uh, believe it or not, it was only about maybe 100 feet back. Okay. You know, the one thing is, if you're fishing with surf line, be really careful when you load the reel back up on the way in. You got to make sure it's nice and level. You build any kind of a hill, that surf line just falls yeah, off. It, it's very easy to back. You, you know, you, you got to explain what surf line actually is. Surf line is seven strands of stainless steel, coiled real tight, wrapped in a rubber coating. So the whole premise of it 
John, is to get the bait down, right? Get the bait down. As it's going back, it'll sink further and further into the water column, and you want to try to find where the fish are. And, and you can actually mark sometimes the surf line, so you look at the color that you're at. I got you. And you can almost let back to there the next time, and you're going to get a strike. So basically, you know, you could use a uh, regular mono here, but it's a pipe dream. You're just going to float yes, away. you're just going to float straight <laughs> okay, back. I got you. All right. So you that, know, and one of the other things you got to remember is you really got to let it back fast. So the moment the current grabs this, it comes up in the water column, and you're basically in the bluefish zone. Yeah, it's got to keep going back with the tide. They generally, from what I always notice when we do it, they generally always hit on a fallback, right, John? Correct. Yeah. yeah. You know, all of a sudden, that line's going out and starts going out a lot faster. Yeah. And then just you gotta take keep your thumb on swing. There. Yep. Let's see if we can hook up another one. Well, how about this? He takes us out here fishing, and it looks like he hooked up first respectable fish. <laughs> And you think he knew something? By the way, he wasn't using the same outfits we were using. What do you got on there, John? I got a pen fork, 300. And loaded with? Uh, uh, mono. Mono. With weight, six ounce, six ounce. Well, I was on a fish finder rig, right? Yeah, just a fish finder rig and just bouncing it back. Now, John just said to me, this tide's starting to ease a little bit. If you want, take the surf lawn off and try to braid. So I guess the stages, John, would be Monel, surf, surf lawn, lawn, braid, mono. Correct. All right. And, you know, once again, you're just trying to keep your bait in the hit zone. You're making and me a little dizzy here, John. This fish is walking me all over. Andy, why don't you grab a net for that yeah, fish? Yeah, you know, and maybe a safety line for John. Yeah, yeah. Not a very big one. He's walking on rubber bands. Bring it in there. Now, John, uh, the average fish, what would you say you see here? Something like that? Uh, this is a little below average. Really? Yeah, this oh, is a that's little good. below. Ready? Yeah, just bring him over here. She's got me very excited by saying that. Visit the Northeast Angling website at neangling.com for nationwide saltwater charter directory, fishing news, and free fishing reports. You can also find dozens of techniques, tips, and tackle for every saltwater species. Now let's get back to the action. All right, guys. And again, Andy. Uh, I was back about <coughs> maybe 70 feet or so. Well, it's really important you don't let back too fast here because you'll overrun the bait. Yeah, yeah. your bait will, will, lay, will be like in one spot and your line's looped way behind yeah, it. You get a big belly in the line. Yep. You don't even feel that bite sometimes. Yeah, right. agreed. But I'll tell you what, it's tough to tell what's on the end of the line, whether it's a bluefish or a bass, because it's just enough current. Everything feels good here. And it's fun. <laughs> I think he's right. coming up now. Right? Yeah, I don't think he's a moose, but he's not bad. Whatever it is. It doesn't feel like a bluefish. I'll tell you what, with coming this up. surf line, you feel everything. Oh, yeah, every little yeah. bounce. Every, every little pickup. Yeah, he's, he's got the right color. That's a nice there. bass, Andy. Yep. Well, well, you want to hit that one, John? Sure. It really is a, you, it takes a few tries. To get a good feel for how much, how quick to let back. About, I think, you know, somewhere around 150, maybe, Rich. I got you. I'll tell you what, these cut in this car. Oh, that's a better fish. Feels good. That's a nice fish. A little lift up, a little walk back. Yeah, we're gonna turn him a little bit. Ready? Right in. That's respectable. It's not too shabby. Get him out of there. Yeah. Too bad. Keeping all states that are allowed for allowed to do striped bass. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> and then some. John, how long does this bite go season-wise? When do you start? When does it pretty much end? Or well, does it end? I, I come out here in uh, the beginning of July. Woo! Wow, that's a quick release right there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That fish is absolutely lit up, and off he goes. I need another bait. So anyway, like beginning I was of saying, July. Beginning of July, I come out. I mean, there's a few fish here before him, but the bigger ones come here, and start getting here in July, and then it runs right through December. Wow. Uh, the end to the right to the end of the season. Yep. And what do you what are you looking for, John? You just you looking for some high spots. Correct. Rock look, piles. Rock piles. You, you'll see the marks on the down downside tide of the rock pile, and you so, try to get on top. Yeah. Of that, them. See, that's very important. So you always want to anchor up tide of the structure. 
and you want to work your way. And you, you want to get your baits behind. Behind it, it Correct. right? Because them fish, they want to. Obviously, they have to get out of this tide, or else they'd be exhausted. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this is not one of those places where the fish lay on the front edge of the piece. Nah. So what they're doing is they're just laying back behind these boulders and they're just ambushing what comes by. Correct. And there's less current back there because they're below it. Right. So you get them to peek their heads out with the chum, and then uh, drop a nice bloody chunk into them. Exactly. And fresh bunkers is the best. I mean, you, I've tried frozen, it works a little bit, but bringing the fresh stuff. Well, the problem with frozen, it gets washed out really fast and people don't change it often enough. Correct. You know, we're cheating a little bit. We're putting activate on all our baits just to, to make sure that we have every opportunity to hook a fish here and that they want to take these baits. And that helps as well. I think that absolutely work on the frozen. I'm working in there. I'm just under you there, Rich. Come out. Not the biggest fish, certainly a keeper, certainly fun. Let's see, we'll bring them up over so here. So what you like I said before, what you want to do is just keep line going back and you want to just feel for that bump. And when you get that bump, you want to lock it up and you want to set. Well, you're about as ba you're now about back as far as I was before. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just had another touch. Come on. There he is. I'm in. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks a little bigger than mine. Not too bad. That's just wrong. Oh. Come to life? Yeah. All right, let's switch sides. Let me just jump in here because I want to try and get a bait back while this is all going on. You need the net for that I like one? how courteous you are. You, like, take the lines out of the right, water. I take care of you guys. Yeah, this is cutthroat <laughs> fishing. <laughs> you don't know us very well, do you? <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> oh, I do. You want me to get the net? Uh, yeah, more than likely. It feels like a decent fish. It's actually coming up in the tide now. He's staying down. Oh. That fish got some size to him, Rich. It might be good. Got him, John? Yep. Here we go. There we nice go. one. Not a bad fish. Solid. T-top. 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 I've snapped uh, many a rod on that, John. You know, I, I'm afraid that uh, Rich has a pool now. I don't know about that. I got a feeling you're going to get bigger, though. Yeah, we'll see. That's not a bad fish, though. Oh. <laughs> Better go down and get him. Oh. You can always tell a guy who's caught a lot of bass. Just look at, look at his on. hands. Look at his hands. Right to the <laughs> Scraped up pretty damn good. That's a nice fish. Not bad. Not too bad. Now, we did say we were going to take one for the table, so we're going to hold on to this fish. It's a perfect yeah, eating size. Not, yeah, it's not too big. Yeah, plus I fought him out pretty good. You know, you don't want to, you know, make sure he takes off, so. Right. But we'll take all, we'll take all of this one, I think. What do you think? Yeah, just drop him in the fish box right there right. put him in a well. That's nice. That'll work. Yep. Getting it done. I am just tearing this up right now. <laughs> oh my God! Rich, Rich <laughs> seems to have the hot hand. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't earlier. <laughs> but uh, does that one feel better, Rich? Uh, yeah, John, it actually does. Feels good. He's out a long ways. I'll tell you, I, you know, like I said, it's it's amazing the difference, you know, between you you couldn't fish this if you didn't. There you go, a little drag there. If you, it, there's no way you could fish this if you didn't have the surf on on it. Just impossible. And it's such a fun way to catch these fish, you know? Well, it's, you're direct to the fish. There's no stretch. Yeah, I mean, Andy, even when we charter in the sound, you know, my customers, your customers love it because it's all hands-on fishing, you know? You're, you're, you're doing everything yourself. You're not, you're, not, you're not trolling. You're not, oh, look at this. He's pulling drag. He's up, too. You're not pulling drag. I mean, you're not pulling wire. The boat's not hooking the fish. You know, this is all hands-on. You got to do everything yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, and, there's, it, and there's a lot of feel here because you got to really feel your bait. And you got to know when you've hung your bait in the bottom. Yep. There's a, there's a little bit of skill to it. Yeah, it takes a little, it takes a little bit, but once you get it, probably the only thing that's easy is the hook set. Uh, yeah, because you got no stretch. Yeah, but, there's no stretch. But, you know, it, like I said, it's such a nice way to fish. A lot of people think chunking is kind of boring. You know, you're waiting around for the rods to go. Not with this, because you really got to pay attention. You got to stay in tune, and you got to be persistent also, you know? And your line's always moving. Yep. Never any down touch. Except when you hang a rock and you have to splice wire together like you guys Which should. I just had to do. <laughs> well, because I got sloppy. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who hung the rock? I said I like you guys just right. did, well, splicing we, it. I assisted You're not even splice. fishing. We know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's pulling good line now. Come on, baby, dig. Oh. I'll wait for you to get this fishing. Like Wet your lips for me. No, Come on. just start fishing. We got hey, three, now. We got hey three, now. We got three charter captains here. Oh, we can't God. figure out a Chinese <laughs> fire drill. Nobody can. Yeah, well. A lot of years between, it's like 90 years. He now. uses that line only when I'm fighting the fish. 
You know, yeah, you know, when, when he's, when he's fighting water. the fish, oh, yeah. not no, true. When, he, when he's fighting the fish, you never hear this. It's oh, only when I am. Is. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Come here, sugar. Up the papa. There he goes. Oh! Got some color on this fish. And this fish. Like a good one, Rich. Yeah, it is. This, this fish waffled the head, by the way. I'm just going to sit here and wait for one of you guys to give me a hand, all right? He's, see, he's see, only lip hooks. So see, I know, I see that. See that my arms are hanging off also at this point? <laughs> well, the good news is it's not hard to revive them. Lift up, back up, head first into the net. There you go. Shazam. That's a better one, Rich. That's a nice fish, John. Don't take too many of them to make a dozen. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh the best part good. about that fish was he was on my line. <laughs> that I can honestly say. <laughs> Oh, right in the corner of the mouth. Perfect hook. Perfect. Oh. And solid. Solid. Oh. That is not too shabby, Red. No, I'm going to release that fish. Oh, look at that. He's peeing everywhere. Woohoo! Happy fish. But, uh, oh, nice solid fish. And, uh, we'll get another one. You know, the other I, nice I, thing is that these releases here, oh, yeah. we have so much current, really easy. Fish are going to be in great shape when we let them go. Well, I feel like I'm really getting into the zone right now, so. There you go. I'm back. There you go. I just think it was blasted out of here. Visit the Northeast Angling YouTube channel for hundreds of videos, including full length episodes, exciting clips, product reviews, and instructional videos. And now, the exciting conclusion of uh, Northeast Angling. In keeping with the dumber the farmer, the bigger the crop. I just went for a piece of chicken. <laughs> and Rich's rod's in a holder and gets hit. Rich, there's not a lot of back and left on there. Right, right. You're all the way out to the end. So he basically threw all his surflon. <laughs> all the surflon's out. And we're going to be here a while. But please, just, so, so just keep fishing. <laughs> John, just keep fishing because you know what? I'm just going to get rid of this wire right. just to get in the way. I'm going to use the mono with the heavy weight. The dumber the farmer, the bigger the crop. <laughs> no, that was literally just sitting in the holder while I was eating some of Joe's favorite chicken. <laughs> And the next thing you know, it gets hit. Fish on! <laughs> oh, that's great. It's not easy being this damn good. But I'll tell you, Rich, the only problem you're going to have yeah. is you're so far out that any charter boat trolling within a mile <laughs> is going to cut you off. <laughs> oh, boy. Ah, look at that! That was without chicken. And that was a chickenless bite. <laughs> that was without chicken. But then again, you should have had chicken. Oh, I thought you lost him for sure there. Is he swimming that tight? Yeah. Well, that's always a good sign because smaller fish usually don't swim up the tide. Oh, no? Uh, we'll see, though. <laughs> Curious. Whoa, what do you got? <laughs> Drifting and dreaming? Oh, don't, don't stop fishing. No, oh, leave that line in the water. Come on, Come on leave now. that in there. Well, actually, we're getting, it's getting late now anyway, but we're probably going to be heading back soon. Caught a ton of fish today. Yeah. This is really... John, amazing bite. And an average John, an average John of you doing this, what do you think? Amount of fish? Yeah. Uh, on a good day, 20 to 30. On a bad day, 8 to 10. I got you. Yeah, 12. And size-wise? This year we've had up to 40, 46, 48. I got you. And uh, a lot in the 30s. All right. Um, today they were a little smaller, but we don't know what's on the other end right now. Every day's different. All I know is whatever's on the other end, it'll be bigger than Andy's. Well, because mine's coming in, but it could be that yours didn't look like a bluefish when it just oh, surfaced. Oh, no, mine's there. definitely not a bluefish. Yeah, no. when I just seen your surface, yeah. it did not look like a bluefish. Oh, man. You guys got the same fish? No, no. I hooked them first. I'm just kidding. And the deep hook gets them if there's two hooks in them. That Absolutely. Is, that is a party boat rule, by the way. Absolutely. It depends. Unless I like the guy that caught the pool, then I give it to him. <laughs> I got color. Still got about 100 yards to go, but I got color. Oh, what is that? That's a bass. Yeah, yeah that's my bass. <laughs> no, no, he's not on Andy's oh, line. No, look. He's just, You're going to beat me in. He's spinning. Wait, wait, wait. What he's, do you guys got? I'm oh, surfing. No, you got one behind it. Yeah, yeah I'm, sur I'm him. surfing mine in, and this 19 knot freaking died. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's a great point, because nobody can really fish this. 
No. You know, how do you anchor up in fishes without the method that we did today? No, there's no way you're not going to get down to where these fish are. Ah, it's impossible. Oh. You want the net on that, baby? I think he's got one behind him. Yeah, it's mine. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. You're right. He does have. He did have one. Behind I thought him. I seen a fish behind him. Does oh. anybody need a net? Do you need help? No, I think no, I'm good. no. Mentally, physically, no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Hang on a second. All right, let me get that out of your way. No, it's good. I get around. What are you doing? Good not my gear. If it goes in, it goes in. Oh, it's your gear. Oh, thanks, Andy. <laughs> That's great. Uh oh. Nah, I still got you beat. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Coin flip. <laughs> I don't know how those freshwater guys do this. <laughs> well, what they do is they take their thumb and they put it in the mouth of the fish, and then they lift them in. Striped, striped bass always spin around just before you grab them, you know? You want to hand it that one? Ah, uh, no, I guess not. Why don't you put them right in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, another two beautiful Montauk bass. I'll tell you, John, this really was a great way to catch these fish. Oh, man, I, I, I absolutely could do this all day. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it changes all day long. It's not boring because you, you got to keep technique moving. changes you keep every moment. Moving. I see that when you had chicken. You had chicken? Yeah, when you had the chicken. Hey, the chicken was the reason I caught this fish. Exactly. You kidding me? <laughs> he, wanted to, he wanted to come up and taste the fish right off my chin. Uh, I'm going to let him go. We'll slide him like, back in the water. I feel like I'm getting in the zone here. Give this a, few, give this a bit more, see if we can really nail something big. Well, everybody wanted to go in. But, uh, Rich, where are you going back to? Port Washington today? Yes, on one road out of Montauk. Yeah, yeah. And as well as I. John, at, ru at rush hour. I, <laughs> I'm actually going on to Block Island. And yeah. We're in Montauk. We, you see, here's the, here's the thing. We, you know, we do 100 freaking shows that we've done. We leave bites, and I go crazy that he leaves bites on me. And the one time that I want to leave, because he's got nothing to do, we're going to stay out here and fish all day now. We said 1 o'clock. It's not 1 o'clock yet. It it's 1.50. One by All time right, I Andy, this fish in. Going horses, you got a good one there. Yeah. 150. Wait, don't we have to cut it? Yeah, no, yeah, right. Cut what the is, line because yeah, he doesn't have enough time? Where's that knife? <laughs> the, come here. You think I'm kidding? No, 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 no. That's only because he wants his fish finder rig back. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice fish. You know, there's a lot of current here. Every fish is going to feel big. Right, but that one, I think that one took some drag. That one actually oh, yeah. took some drag, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's lock and load fishing now. I know we've been using the, uh, the surf line. It's probably time to put that away. And, and this will be the last fish of the day, John, so you can not rebate that one. Yeah, I can put this away, yes. right? I thought that got hit. <laughs> and, John, pretty simple. You're using, uh, what, like a 7-0, 8-0? Mustad, uh, like an octopus style hook, beak hook, right? Yep, correct. And, and that's just a, a Mustad Ultra Point? Uh, mostly 8.0s, though. Yeah. I, don't, I don't use too many 7.0s. I got you. But Flora. that, that Mustad 8.0 8 Ultra Point's got some nice weight to it. It kind of helps for the flat lining. What pound test fluoro is that, Andy? Um, on? We've got Berkeley Vanish on here, and I got 50 on. The reel's loaded with 50-pound uh, big game, which you really need for this kind of fishing. You know, it's not, this is not 30-pound fishing. It's a really yeah, big Yeah, and uh, you got to remember, here. Berkeley does make that surf line also. Yes. The seven strand, it's very good. And we use that for bluefish hooks also, they work great. Yeah, no, it's good for everything. Looks like you may have a good one there, Yeah, it's solid. He's not the strongest guy in the world, John. It takes him a little while I'm, sometimes. I'm so. loving this reel, though. This reel's got so much muscle. It really it's does. It's really a pleasure. Ah, uh, are we getting close here or what? I got color! Oh, that was a good one. It's a solid fish. That is a nice fish. Not too shabby, not too shabby. You got the net, Rich? No. <laughs> you want me to get it? He's still got 20 feet. Come on, it's gonna take another three minutes. <laughs> oh. No doubt these fish come in revived because they get their mouths open. Oh, you just spit up my chunk. Thank you for watching. You can use the buttons below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch more videos, or to learn more about the location, techniques, and gear as seen in this video.